Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about types of functions. So if you're given a, a function either in a table, as a graph, or in written form, you'll be able to identify what type of function it is and some of its key features. So for example, in this video, you're going to learn how to identify linear, quadratic, cubic, and exponential functions from either a graph, an input-output table, or written form, like as in written as an equation, right? And you're going to learn how to identify the rate of change, the domain and the range, the graph shape, the name of the graph shape. And you're also going to be able to recognize how the largest exponent will help you to recognize what type of function you have, right? So key question though, as you're going through this, you need to be thinking about why is it that some of these functions have limits in their outputs and their range. So as we're working through this, kind of keep that in uh, not too far from the forefront of your mind, and it's going to help you to make connections. It'll help you remember and uh, better understand. Let's get into it now. First one is, of course, linear functions, linear equations, and you're probably already familiar with these basic forms like y equals mx plus b, right? So you probably remember that the slope is the coefficient of x, you know, the m and the y-intercept is the b. And the reason that is true is because for all y-intercepts, x equals zero. If you put a zero here for x, whatever the slope is times zero is just zero, you're left with y equals b. So your y-intercept is zero comma whatever that number is. Here's a couple of examples, some linear equations, y equals the number, x equals the number. Those are some special cases. These here, uh, this has a slope of negative one-half y-intercept of 5. This has a y-intercept of 0, a slope of 5, right? But in all cases, for linear equations, the largest exponent is a 1. Now, let's talk about what the graphs look like. The graphs are just lines, right? You could have a positive slope like this one, or a negative slope like this one, or our two special cases, a horizontal line, which is y equals a number, or a vertical line, which is x equals a number. Now, it turns out that when it's x equals a number, x equals a number, it's an equation, but it's not actually a function because in order to be a function, each input has to have exactly one output. Here, our input of five has infinitely many outputs. So that one's a little bit different. Now, what if you were given an input output table and you were being asked, hey, what kind of function is this? Well, this is what's gonna happen if you have a linear function. What you're gonna do is you're gonna compare the consecutive outputs. So X is the input, Y is the output. It doesn't matter how the table is formed. It could be vertical or it could be horizontal like this one. You just compare consecutive. So the difference between these outputs is two and the difference between those outputs is two and so on. So we're gonna call this first set of differences the first change. And if our first change is constant, that means we have a constant slope and our function is linear. Right, So we're going to have a rate of change to this constant. Our first change is going to be the same, and we're done. Now let's talk about domain and range. If you have a typical linear equation where you have a positive slope or a negative slope, well, then your domain and range are just going to be all real numbers. You can use any number you want. The two exceptions, though, are the horizontal line, like this one here, which is y equals 5, and the vertical line right here, which is like, x equals 5. Here, the domain is anything you want. All real numbers is the domain, but the range is only whatever that number is. So the range of this graph right here is just 5. The domain is all real numbers. Here, the domain is just 5, but the range, which is the set of all possible outputs, is 5. So it's typically all real numbers for both the domain and range for a linear function. But sometimes you have those exceptions, like if it's a vertical line or a horizontal line, and just be careful of that. Otherwise, you should be ready to go. Now, next up on our slate, quadratic functions. In a written form, the way a quadratic function is going to look like, it's going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. That's standard form. There's other ways to write it too, but the thing you're going to look for is that the largest exponent is 2. And because the largest exponent is 2, this is not going to have a constant slope. It still has a y-intercept, whatever this number is. If you put a 0 for the x's, because x equals 0 for all y-intercepts, you're going to be left with 0 plus 0 
plus c. So your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, whatever that number right there is. A couple of examples of what these things look like. You could have y equals x squared. This is called vertex form. If you've not learned about quadratics yet, you'll learn about that later. Anyway, and all of these, biggest exponent is 2. Those are quadratics. You see? Now let's talk about the graphs. The graph of a quadratic equation has a special name. The, the shape has a special name. It's called a parabola. And for quadratic functions, they either go up, like this, this example on the left, or they go down, like this example on the right. And so they're going to be, they're going to have a, either a minimum value, a smallest output, like this one has a smallest output of negative two, or they're going to have a greatest output, a maximum value, like this one here, which is the maximum value is 32.5, right? So if you have a parabola, then you know your graph is, or your function is quadratic. Now let's talk about the input output table. Let's say you're given this input output table and you're being asked to identify what kind of function it is, right? Well, you just compare the consecutive outputs just like you did before. But here what we see is the first change is not constant, you see? 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So you just repeat that process. You take the difference of those changes and then what you find is that the second change is constant. So if you find that the second change is constant, then what you have is a quadratic function. Done and done, right? So last thing, domain and range. The domain for all the quadratic equations is always all real numbers. But the range, well, you have to look at the graph. If you know how to find the vertex, then it's going to be the y of the vertex. And uh, that's going to be like the, the limit. And it's either going to be going up or it's going to be going down. You'll learn about all that in the future. But if you don't know how to do that yet, then you have to look at the graph and you have to find the minimum point or the maximum point. Okay, so here's our two examples right here. The first one we had was going up and we had a minimum value of negative two. So the range of this one would be from negative two and to infinity. Whereas this other example where the parabola is going down, we have a maximum value. So our range would be from negative infinity to 32 and a half. Now, depending on the class you're at or in, you might be asked to write that information, the range and the domain in different set sorts, you know, types of formats. If you did an inequality, it would look like this. Y is greater than or equal to negative two because all of the outputs are going to be larger than or equal to negative two for this function. And here, y is less than or equal to 32 and a half. All right, so for the range, all you're gonna do is you're gonna find that minimum or maximum point and make sure you address it correctly. If it's going up, it's from the minimum to positive infinity. If, the, if it has a maximum value, which means it's gonna be going down, the parabola is going down, the range is gonna be from negative infinity to that maximum value. Let's talk about cubic functions now, shall we? In written form, they're going to look something like this. AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. Once again, we do not have a constant slope. We do have a y-intercept that is this value. But the key thing you need to recognize, largest exponent is 3. So if you're given a function and, it's, and you're being asked what kind of function it is, if the biggest exponent is a 3, boom, you know it's, it's cubic, right? So... If you have biggest exponent 3, it's cubic. Let's take a look at the, what the graphs look like, shall we? They either go up, like this one here, from left to right. This one's overall going up. Or they go down from left to right. Now, they could have a little dip in the middle like this, or it could have just a tiniest of squiggles. But if it's going up from left to right, like this, and it's go, or it's going down from left to right, like this, those are cubic. Now, there are other kinds of functions that look kind of similar to this, but for what we're learning right now, that's all we got, because we're going to do linear, quadratic, cubic, and exponential functions. So if it looks kind of like a sideways S, it's cubic. Biggest exponent, 3, cubic. Let's talk about the input-output table now, shall we? If you have an input-output table and you're being asked, hey, what kind of function is this? You do just like you did before. You take the, You find the change between the consecutive outputs, if the first change is constant, it's linear. This one's not. So you go ahead and do that again. Take the differences again, 6, 12, 18, and 24. Boy, the second change isn't constant either. So you do it again. Hopefully, the third one will be. And in this case, it is. It's a change of 6. That third change is constant. That means that the function is cubic. 
So if the first change is constant, that means it's got a constant slope, linear. If the second change is constant, it means it's quadratic. If the third change is constant, then it's cubic, right? So if the third change is constant, it's cubic. Now, domain and range for this one, sorry about that. Domain and range for this one, super, super easy. They're all real numbers all the time, no worries. So if it's cubic, domain and range, all real numbers. Last one, exponential functions. In written form, what you're going to see is that the exponent is the input. The input is the exponent. So there isn't the largest exponent for these. The exponent itself is the input. The graphs, they're kind of funky looking. If you see something that looks like this, you see it it's going, it's increasing very, very quickly, but to the left, it doesn't seem to cross zero. It doesn't seem to cross the, the X axis. Whereas this one, it's decreasing. And then it doesn't seem to go below Y equals one. And here it starts off from left to right. So you read a graph is from left to right. It's, it's decreasing very slowly at first. And then it starts decreasing very, very quickly, but it doesn't seem like it goes above um, y equals three here. These are called horizontal asymptotes. And they're pretty important values because, or pretty important pieces of information because they kind of, they, they limit the graph. So here we don't have an output for this first example. We don't have an output that's less than zero. And here we don't have an output that's less than one. Here we don't have an output that is greater than three. You see? And so the domain for these is super easy. It's all real numbers, but the range, well, you have to look at the graph. So the range for this one is from zero to infinity. The range for this one is also zero to infinity. The range, sorry, the range for the second one isn't zero. It's one to infinity. The range for this one is from negative infinity to three. And that's it. So you have to read the graph. You have to look for that horizontal asymptote. That is the boundary of your range. Now, if you see a table and you're being asked, hey, what kind of function is this? You're not going to find a pattern in the changes, at least not a constant pattern. So if you do the first, second, third change, and, and you're still getting nothing that's constant, it's probably exponential, especially if you're learning, if the information you have access to is what's presented in this video, then you're good to go right there. So here's what we got. Summary of what we have right here is there's a little table right here. I will put a link in the description below where you can download this document right here. It's going to be at my website, thebeardedmathman.com. I'll put a link to specifically to the page that has this. And I will also put a link to the page that has the these practice problems that you can download. Hey, if you're trying to learn this, you should try the practice problems. Leave me a comment below if you have a question, if you want to know how you did. Also, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.